All right, YouTube. Okay, so um, this is a follow-up little discussion here based on the, the last video that I posted dealing with the overhand stop to uh, top stock retention shuffle. And I just want to clarify a few things that came up in some of the comments and discussion there. Um, first of all, uh, I'll just note uh, some of you have... Uh, arguments, good arguments to make and, and uh, interesting perspectives to offer uh, for the sake of discussion. And that is all great, and I welcome all that, and I, I will try to respond to people as they have time, and we tend to have a lot of time right now if you're in a situation like I am, uh, which I think we all are. Um, I'm happy to do that. I love having you know a good argument about something and just discuss things and hash them out and try to understand where people are coming from and, and, and get perspectives and share my own. Uh, however, if you're just going to be mean, and one of, one of you guys on there was just straight up mean. I don't know where you're coming from. You're going to get banned, right? I threw that bum out of there. He's banned. So don't you know, don't be mean. Don't just say mean things for the sake of feeling great, you know, about yourself. That's just nonsense. So um, I do want to address those of you, though, that have some interesting uh, ideas and uh, gripes, I guess, uh, about about that. Uh, and, and I'll explain a few things here. I think, I think part of the misconception, if there is one, I think there is one, uh, a couple, actually. Uh, part of that is that uh, I made a, a couple of bold statements in there which may or could be interpreted a little bit more differently, a little bit more nuanced than what I intend. And I just want to explain that a little bit uh, and at least say that at least those of you that I was talking with, I do appreciate your your point. Uh, appreciate meaning understand. I understand exactly what you're saying. And I'll try to reiterate that here uh, so that you can confirm it. Um I still stand by what I'm saying because I think I'm saying something a little different than what you're, you may be thinking that I'm saying or, or the way my words may have come across or the way that I had, had uh, put my thoughts together. So uh, let me do that. The first bold thing I said that I know one of you took issue with was I think I said the title of the video was the, the, the best false shuffle that I use. The best false shuffle that I use. And I just want to make sure you understand that that, that turn of phrase um, is a little bit more complex than just saying the best false shuffle I know, right? Or the best false shuffle there is. When I say it's the best false shuffle I use, it is uh, that statement is dependent upon use, what what am I doing, right? If it's if it's the best thing, I, it's like saying out of my toolbox, the best tool that I use. Well, what's my job? You know, what is it? What is it that I'm doing with my tools? What what occupation do I have, or what avocation do I have uh, that I would use a set of tools? And therefore, what you know, if I'm a plumber, I'm going to have a best tool for that job than if I was an electrician. You know, it's not going to be the same thing. So when I say the best false shuffle that I use, I, I mean it. It's the best false shuffle for what I do. And I tried to explain that, uh, and hopefully you listen to me as I explain the types of the types of applications that you can use that, you know, simple top stock retention shuffle for. It's a simple shuffle. Now, on the other side of that, I think there was an expectation. It may have been a little unfair, to be honest with you, given the statement I made about the best false shuffle that I use. But there, there may have been an expectation there that I was going to show you the best sh false shuffle there is, or the best that I know, or whatever, uh, or the best for every circumstance, or just the best uh, of a certain kind. Uh, and there's some assumptions about, you know, false shuffles that are worthy of learning. You know, and people have different perspectives about that too, based on what you're doing and what what kind of magic you do. Um, and part of that is uh, driven, I think, by feelings that we have about certain kinds of magic. So, for example, one of the closely related issues with this topic is the topic of full deck stacks. Right? If I have a memorized deck or a full deck stack. When I say false shuffle, it really needs to mean one kind of false shuffle. And that's a blind false shuffle, a blind shuffle, one where the entire deck retains its full order. Now, just to be clear, that is not what the word fault, the term false shuffle means at all in magic. It just isn't. 
That is not what that term means in any magic literature. When the term false shuffle is used, what that's referring to is the retention of any number of cards in a place and not shuffling them. So if I'm taking a deck of cards and I'm going to shuffle them truly, I need to do a few things. It doesn't matter if it's in the hand or not, right? Certainly if I do a an overhand shuffle, this accomplishes the things I'm going to show you right now, right? Every card needs to go to a different location. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're in a different location in relationship to each other, but they have to go to a different place, right? If I do an overhand shuffle, a lot of those cards are going to be in the same relationship to each other, but every card is in a different place in the stack, right? And then the idea is that I'd follow that up with a few more. Uh, to uh, try to break up those packets, right? But on the table, if I'm doing a shuffle, a legit shuffle, it has to be done like this. I have to take the top half, take it off to one side. I have to drop the top half first, then I have to interlace, and then I have to end with the bottom half, and then I have to push them together. Only in that circumstance has have all of the cards been moved to a different place. Okay, if I do this, this is a false shuffle. Whether you intend to do it or not, you are falsely shuffling because some one or two or however many cards you have there at the top are still at the top. And depending on what you're doing down here, if you start with the bottom pack and end with the top, not only the top card or cards are in the same place, but the bottom ones are too. Right? That, that is a false shuffle. Again, whether you intend for it or not, that's a false shuffle. That's not a real shuffle. A shuffle, by the book, has to drop that top packet first and end with the bottom packet, and they have to go together. Okay? So, just, just to clarify what a false shuffle is, right? So, my point that I was making is, is that most of the magic that you do, or most people do, uh, will involve the retention of, the control or retention of just a few cards. Maybe only one card. Most of the time it's just one card. If you're doing pick a card, find a card kind of effects, right? Um, if you're dealing with stacks, most tricks that deal with stacks don't use a full stack. They just use a stack of a few prepared cards, like you have all the aces start on the top, or you need to have the queens and the aces, or you need to have a set of gaffs, right? Right, if you're doing certain tricks that require gaffes, that is that's th that describes the majority of of effects with cards that have to have some preparation. You're dealing with this chunk right here. Sometimes you're dealing with a chunk on the bottom. Most of the time, though, it's on the top. And my point is, is that when you're doing that, or if you're doing a control, or if you're doing a force, you can really do all of those things just with this one, one simple, very simple false shuffle, right? Where you're retaining one chunk of cards in jogging, shuffling fair. And then you have to follow up with a second one, uh, and then get back to your, your little stack right here, okay? Your, your slug. Um, now, that's the first thing. So when I say it's the best false shuffle that I use, uh, hopefully that makes sense. Now, part of that then is why wouldn't you use a blind shuffle? If you have a good blind shuffle, why wouldn't you use a blind shuffle all the time, right? And one of the analogies that was made is that it's like a Swiss Army knife, right? I, I don't think that's quite right. It's not a Swiss Army knife. A blind shuffle is a sledgehammer. It's not a Swiss Army knife. It's a sledgehammer, right? It is, it is the absolute control of every card. Um, and it's not subtle. You know, there are no subtle blind shuffles. I know some people will say that certain blind shuffles can look, you know, absolutely fooling. I don't think any blind shuffles really look absolutely fooling to anybody that knows that it's there. Now, I will say that, as I said on the video, and this was one of the uh, second point of contention I had with someone else there we were discussing, they said that they would be able to identify this, right? Because you can see the injog, especially kind of the snarky way he put it was how big I made it in the thing. You know, give me a break here. It doesn't matter how big it is. It really doesn't because I'll, I'll show you right now. I'm going to do, I'll do a, um, uh, uh, a shuffle here. And I'll move this up so you can see. Uh, the the real the real view here okay so I'll do the shuffle and so you're not looking my perspective you're looking out there right I throw off one packet I injog one and the 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 statement there is that you can see that therefore you can identify it right that's the that's the the statement so I continue on 
And, and you would say, yes, but I know that you're doing that because I could see your injog, right? And then I follow through and I throw my top stock back on top. Oh, except I didn't. I didn't throw a top stock. I, that was a legit shuffle. I don't know where the top is at, right? The, the point is that this, whenever you're doing an overhand shuffle, unless you're being, I, I remember seeing this on a forum one time, someone talking about, I've been working on my overhand shuffle and making it absolutely perfect and making it so I don't have any cards sticking out. I don't flip any or drop any. That's not an overhand shuffle. An overhand shuffle is the, is the every man's shuffle, right? And if you're really doing it, there's going to be jogs. That's normal. That is the normal way that this shuffle is done. So just because someone would see the first card or, or packet being dropped as an in-jog doesn't mean with any certainty that this is a top stock retention shuffle. Likewise, just because there's an out-jog doesn't mean that I'm going to be retaining a bottom or middle stock, which you can do, right? Because I can lift up and create a breakout there or pick up on that block and throw it. I I can control depending on jogs, but jogs are normal in the procedure of an overhand shuffle. Therefore, it's it's essentially undetectable. Now, if I do an overhand shuffle and then a certain thing happens immediately after that, yes, you could deduce what happened there. You know, you, you can figure that out and sort it out. But it's not something, my, my point is it's not something that if you're burning the deck, it's something you say, aha, I saw that. You can't really you can't really determine that with any certainty. You can assume, but you can't be certain. That's not the case for any other false shuffle, right? Now, uh, one of you brought up um, uh, the false shuffle uh, that uh, uh, you, you put a link on there too. It's a cyclical shuffle. Was the one you're looking at? It's 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 a slightly better version of this, which actually also passes as a, a blind shuffle. Uh, that is to take cards and rather than do a uh, an overhand shuffle kind of motion, you cut bottom packets to the top, right? So you just pick up bottom packets and throw them to the top. And if you do this over and over again, this looks like shuffling the deck, but you're not. You're just rotating cuts, right? If you were to uh, identify, say, a top card, five of spades, bottom card, ace of clubs, and you did this motion, uh, and then you went in to, to, to take, take a look at the spread, and then you did a cut, you're back to normal, right? That's a, that's a legit false shuffle motion. It's something you do in an off moment. It's not something you say, now I'm going to shuffle the deck. You don't bring attention to it. But it is a completely legit way to keep it together. Now, what you posted was a variation on this, which looks kind of like the, when, when you do the Hindu shuffle where you take back a stack and you hold it. You can hold that stack to uh, drop at the end, right? So there it is. It's the same idea, but you keep holding back. But it's the same cyclical shuffle, right? And it looks like this in slow motion. Not something I do, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna present it here at any great speed. But the idea is that you drop a packet, and then when you go to drop the next packet, you pick up the first packet. And then you keep picking up as you thumb off packets until you get down to the end. And if you do this at speed for about four or five packets, it looks pretty legit. But there's a tell in this. It's not perfect. Like I said, all blind shuffles have something about them that are identifiable that this top stock retention doesn't for what it, for what it can do. Um, notice that when you shuffle in this manner and you pick up, Every time you pick up, what's left is always the same balance of cards, right? If you watch this hand on that shuffle, doesn't matter how good the person is, you will note that the final block that's thrown is always an enormous amount on top of a small packet. So that that is a tell for that. You can't do a blind shuffle. You can't hide a sledgehammer, right, in your dinner jacket, you can't you can't do it, right? It's too big. It's too big of a feat to do subtly, right? Now, that doesn't mean that you can't fool people with with blind shuffles, right? I can I could um I could do a, a zero shuffle that is convincing to people. You're not convinced cuz you know you know what it is. Right? You you know what's going on and you can see it and you know what look you know what to look for and you that would never fly. I can tell you, we can all watch Richard Turner, and if we know the idea of a strip out or a push through shuffle, you, Richard ain't gonna pull anything 
on you that you don't see. The amazement of watching Richard Turner, someone like that, as a magician, is that you know what he's doing. And he does it so cleanly. That's that's the impressive part of it, right? Um, now, you probably are going to get lost in all of the controls. That's a whole other thing, too. But there's nothing about blind false shuffles that is fooling to any magician. It just doesn't exist. There's nothing like that. You're gonna there's a major tell because it's such a it's such a major control to keep everything in order. You can't really hide it. Uh, not really not really possible. Now I got a little bit sidetracked there in why it is that one might assume when I say, you know, the best shuffle I use, you would want it to be or think that it ought to be a blind shuffle. Um, one of the reasons is because we think of that as being awful cool, right? To be able to take a deck that's a new deck order, do all kinds of shuffles with it, and then demonstrate that everything is in, you know, full new deck order. This is not, obviously, but uh, that's a very, you know, that's kind of a one of those holy grail kinds of feats in card magic is to be able to control a deck in that way. I've actually been thinking about a number of... Um, uh, things that I want to put together, a number of uh, techniques and methods I would like to put together in a, a presentation about that subject, about uh, you know returning or bringing a shuffled deck to new deck order. Uh, that was a question that came up probably over a year ago, and I've been thinking about it. Um, but that's one of the reasons why people think about blind shuffles as being the kind of the mountaintop, right? The 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 top of the mountain kind of shuffle. They don't have to be. They're actually very simple blind shuffles that, that are pretty burnable. Um, one, this is a Leonard Green uh, type shuffle. It's one he does because he does stack, uh, stack deck uh, routines. But uh, you take half the deck and then it's not an overhand shuffle. It's it's kind of like a it's kind of like a lazy man's poor man's sloppy um, um, oh I don't know. What do you, what do you call it? A uh, Pharaoh shuffle, right? You, the, the idea is you take the bottom and then you push up the top cover card and then you 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 do this kind of sawing motion and bring them together. And from the front, again, if we bump the camera up here, as you can see in the mirror, right? From the front, it's a it's it's a pretty good it's a pretty good illusion, you know, especially if you really wiggle the cards out. Uh, you can you can convincingly uh, create the illusion that you're jamming the cards together. That's a blind shuffle that's ex incredibly easy, and people can look right at that, you know, if you get nuanced enough on it and get your acting right. Uh, that's a very easy one. A, a blind shuffle doesn't have to be the mountaintop kind of a shuffle, right? Now, even though that looks pretty good, there's plenty of tells with it, right? If you're just looking at uh, card separation, you can see that cards are not separating from each other uh, in Z in the z-axis, you can figure that out, right, just by looking at it uh, long enough or closely enough. Um, anyway, that's one of the reasons people expect it, because it is it is the mountaintop to be able to keep everything together. But that doesn't make it the best, right? The best shuffle is the one is the one you use. The best tool is the one you use for the job you do, for the for the work you do. That's that's what that means, right? Um, and it does no good. So this is the second part of it. It does no good to use that. Um, uh, uh, instrument that that sledgehammer for something much smaller it just is not it's not beneficial in any way it's more risky there's more tells and it accomplishes way more than what is necessary it's just it's over the top it's just not necessary right don't use it if it isn't necessary you improve a trick by removing anything that's not necessary if you have a trick that has a slight uh, in it and if you find that you can accomplish the slight with appropriate misdirection and a clean cut, you've improved the trick. The trick is better by doing that rather than doing the slight. Every time, it's always better if you can convince people of an outcome without doing a slight and doing some other kind of maneuver or some other kind of misdirection or some other kind of method or some other kind of principle is at play, it's a better trick. Because you've done less to get there, and and there's less to criticize, right? It's a lot cleaner. Um, now, there's another reason why we go for the blind shuffle craze, right? That that's got to be the best. It's got to be a blind shuffle. It's got to be the best one. There's a reason why we go there. Um, that's also related to this other topic of stacked decks, 
a, uh, a memorized deck. Memorized decks have been in vogue, at least in social media discussions of magic, um, for the last five to ten years, right? Uh, so Tamara's book came out in 2004-ish uh, on Mnemonica. And, and there's a lot of other stacks. You all know that. There's been stacks around for, you know, as long as playing cards have been around, there have been uh, uh, various types of prepared and memorized stacks. Um, so it's not anything new, but it is a fad. It is, it is a bit of a, it is a bit of a club secret society sort of rite of passage to know a stacked deck order, right? one or two of them in particular, right? And if you know them, then you're kind of in. Uh, and that's that's a goal. I know I memorized Mnemonica, you know. I know where the, the Eight of Hearts is at. Well, do you use it, though? I mean, are you do, do you run all of your routines off of that? Are you, are you doing the Juan Tamara's thing, and are you using that stack for the bulk of your material in a, in a routine? You know, if that's the case, then good for you. But if, if that isn't your goal, then don't, you know, don't bother. It's not that big of a deal to know a, a prepared stack deck. Like I said, I mentioned Harry Lorraine in the comments there as I was discussing with one of you. You know, Harry Lorraine is a memorization guru. Um, but he has said mostly in, in the later years, uh, he, he doesn't do prepared deck work. Right, he doesn't do memorized decks. He doesn't do gaffs and memorized decks and prepared stacks, and he doesn't do that. He wants to take a, a a deck of cards from somebody else that's borrowed that they shuffled, and he wants to do amazing things with it. And I'll tell you what, because of that, there's never a time, probably rarely ever a time, unless unless he's uh, doing a setup on the fly, like if he's doing out of this world or something, and he needs to, um, he has a couple variations of uh, impromptu out of this world, and he needs to do a shuffle in the middle of that, which I don't think he does, he might need to do a blind shuffle. I can tell you, Harry ain't doing no blind shuffles ever. It just isn't going to happen, right? And I I can't believe you'd find anybody to say that a guy like Harry Lorraine isn't one of the very best, right? It, don't put so much weight in this. If you're not using it, then it's not useful. You know, if you don't use the tool, it ain't a useful tool. Now, that being said, the channel, my channel's got a bunch of stuff on, on blind shuffles, right? I have a few things and, and, uh, memorized, uh, decks, uh, stacks and prepared stacks and, uh, uh, you know, pre-ordered stacks and whatnot. Um, I, I, I do appreciate all that stuff and I, I have a little bit of a repertoire in that. But it isn't most of what I do. Most of what I do is going to be that Harry Lorraine scenario where I take a deck of cards that is available and I do something. And because of that, I'll say it again. The best false shuffle that I use is a simple over-the-hand top stock retention. And it's worth it to learn it because you can do so much, do it so fairly and so cleanly. And it's the only it's the only slight you're doing uh, in a lot of cases. So anyway... There's that. Now, I will say I appreciate your, your, your premise and your comment. I understand exactly what some of you are saying about these things, right? You know, I, I understand when you say, well, you can do, uh, you can do a, uh, false shuffle, uh, that is, uh, uh, clean, right? You can do something that looks clean enough and would fool people. But, but anyone that knows a strip out or a pull out shuffle would know what I just did. Right, the sequence is there to see it. You know, if I do it up the ladder, if you know it up the ladder, you you know it right away. You see it. You know it. Right. Um, it's my point was is not that those things are bad. Those things are awesome and they're worthy to use. I'm not saying you that this replaces any of that stuff. I'm just saying that for what you need to do in a lot of tricks, this is way the heck better than some of those other things, those other heavy lifting, uh, you know, kinds of slights. That's, that's a, a completely sufficient maneuver, uh, to do some pretty crazy stuff. Uh, and, and people, magicians and non-magicians alike, you know, they have a hard time not believing overhand shuffles. It's, it's, 
you know they 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 look clean. They just, they just look real. They look they look like like I said the everyman shuffle. So anyway, uh, hopefully that clears the air on a few things. Um, yes, I'm aware there's a lot of other over the hand shuffles that are good. I get it. But my point is is that you don't have to necessarily do those very cool, more sophisticated things. You can do the stupid easy thing and do some really really good stuff with it uh, that is convincing. Um, that's, that's the point. That's the whole point of the video. Anyway, so good luck with that. Happy magicking, and I'll see you on the next, uh, the next edition.